Welcome, this is Finance Cottage with a quick review of Lesson 2 of International Finance. Lesson 2 is about the International Monetary System and in this video we shall discuss the history of monetary system, contemporary exchange regimes and the birth of European currency. So let's start with the history of monetary system. The history of modern currency system has its roots back in late 19th, 19th century when the rule of the game was that every country was required to set the value of its currency in terms of the specific weight of gold. For example, during this time, the dollar value of one ounce of gold was set equal to $20.67 dollars per ounce, and the pound value of one ounce of gold was set to 4.24 pound per ounce of gold. So if somebody wanted to to know the cross rate between dollar and pound so he simply needed to divide the dollar value of ounce of gold to the pound value of ounce of gold so this was was the simple rule of game during this time the currency exchange rates were fixed or pegged with the with the with the weight of gold and this is due to the reason that the expansion in monetary system was very difficult and limited to the value of gold available with, uh, to the country. And this system remained effective until the breakout of World War I, which restricted the free movement of gold among, among countries. Now during the interwar years, what happened? There was no specifically defined or followed exchange regime and the cur currencies um, used to fluctuate fairly over a wide range in terms of gold and each other. And this increased fluctuation uh, gave speculators a chance to sold short the weak currency. So what is sold short mean or the proper term is short selling? So short selling is a strategy opposite to the long holding. What a speculator does in long holding? The speculator in long holding uh, buys the currency at a lower rate and tries to sell it at a higher rate. But in short selling strategy, a speculator sells, sells the currency at a higher rate first and then buys it back at a lower rate. So what the speculators at that time were doing, they were selling short the weak currency and try to buying it back later on uh, to, to earn their profit. So during the post World War II, the, the dollar was the only major trading currency that continued to be converted into dollar, into gold and rest of the, of, of of uh, the currencies they lost their conversion because of limited supply of gold now after world war two <coughs> the allied powers met at britain world and they introduced a monetary system which was later known came to known no, known as the britain wood system so what happened in the britain wood agreement in the britain wood agreement all countries fix the value of their currencies in terms of gold but not required to exchange their currencies for gold means the value of currencies were defined in terms of gold but the the, the currencies were not allowed to be converted into the gold only dollar remained converted at 35 dollar per ounce of gold so this means that if any country want wanted to convert its currency into gold what the what the citizen of uh, that country had to do he first had to convert its currency into dollars and from the dollars he had to get the gold so this was the britain wood agreement or britain wood system and in this system each country established a fixed peg dollar exchange rate to let its currency convertible to dollar so this was the britain wood agreement now the dollar was the only currency convertible to gold and it was the main reserve currency held by central banks resulting in consistent and growing balance of payment deficit which required a heavy capital outflow of dollars to finance these deficits 
and in early 1970s uh, the the US government started printing dollars without proper backing to finance uh, the losses of Vietnam war and this put the economy of United States into an inflationary pressure and this was due to the reason that uh, the dollar and uh, the ratio between the dollar and the gold reserve declined from 55% to 22% so the heavy overhang of dollar held by foreigners resulted in lack of confidence in the ability of US dollar to meet its com commitment to convert dollar to gold so in in early 1970s the Switzerland converted its 50 million dollars into gold and so looking at this this uh, position the American president Richard Nixon suspended official purchase of sale or purchase or sale of gold by US Treasury on August 1971 which ultimately caused an end to the Bretton Woods system so the Richard Nixon you can see the picture of Richard Nixon he uh, officially uh, broke the Bretton Woods system so now in the post Bretton Woods system uh, different countries uh, f uh, started following different exchange rate regimes and after 1973 there were uh, there were different exchange rate uh, regimes followed by the countries in the world the contemporary exchange rate regimes in the world can be classified into these categories so it can be an exchange agreement with no separate legal tender the currency board arrangement other conventional fixed peg arrangement and the pegged exchange rate with within horizontal band the crawling peg exchange rate within the crawling peg managed float floating with no pre announced path and independent floating and there is a working paper mm, let me show you the reference of this paper this is uh, you can see hope you can see the title of the paper is choice of exchange rate regimes for developing countries this paper gives uh, the detail of different exchange rate regimes followed in the world for example here you can see that this paper classifies the exchange rate regimes into four different categories first one is the floating regimes second is the intermediate regime third one is the soft peg regimes and the last one is the hard peg regimes and the detail of every regime is given in the paper for example this is independent float in floating regimes it is independent float and lightly managed float independent float is based purely on market uh, demand and supply mechanism lightly managed float where central bank occasionally uh, intervene to, to control or to check the exchange rates then there is an intermediate regime which comprises the managed float and crawling broadband and so on there is a detail of all these regimes so you can dow download this, this paper from uh, the internet and then you can take a look that what are the proper definition and explanation of these regimes so coming back to the main point so there are different regimes some countries are following fixed regimes some are following managed float or some some others are following crawling peg etc so this is the situation of the post Britain Wood system.